In this video, I'm going to look at the sample buttons and forms in InDesign. And uh, I had a bit of an issue when I wanted to make some sample buttons and forms. Let me go through that really quickly. I'm just going to start a new document, Command N, um, in F by 11, nothing special here, just a new custom document. And what I normally do if I wanted to create an interactive element, maybe I'd have some buttons on there. Uh, and quite simply, I know how to make my own custom buttons instead of using the ones that uh, InDesign gives me. So if I'm going to go to buttons and forms, which is totally fine, and I can add a bunch of different uh, elements here. Now if I go to type and I were to add this and I want to, you know, create a button or a checkbox, combo box, all these good things we could add. We obviously have to have an object first and then we could turn it into something. But in the meantime, the problem I had uh, was a bit of a glitch where if I wanted to go to sample buttons and forms and pull up the library that InDesign had, it wasn't showing up and that was a bit of an issue for me. So instead what I decided to do was make my own. And you can do that too. So if this ever for some reason doesn't show up, uh, which happens, but for me, I'm lucky enough that it's showing up right now and I can actually use some of these. So if I ever want to use a sample button and here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do using a radio button because radio buttons are a little bit trickier. They're still quite simple, but uh, there's a little bit more to them than just your normal submit or a simple button. Because a simple button you can make yourself as well which goes in line with what I'm talking about. So if I want to have a radio button, I'm just click and drag and there's my radio button. And the thing we notice about these radio buttons is they're actually quite simple and they are vector shapes. They're, they're vector, but obviously it has a little bit of pixels uh, in regard to its gradient, but they are based on vectors because this is in design. So if this for some reason wasn't showing up, well, I could just make my own and let me show you exactly that. So if I click on this button right here, look what it shows me it shows me a couple things number one yes it's a radio button number two it has a very specific name r5 and that's actually very important uh the event there is no event uh on release or track or, or tap because you are obviously going to click on it to um create something it's either going to be this or it's going to be that this or blank uh, so we don't actually have to touch anything. It's already given because it's a radio button. Here's the other part that we have to look at, and this is the normal on, normal off, roll over on, roll over off, click on, click off. And we can know something interesting about these that the offs are all relatively the same. The ons are all relatively the same. So let's keep that in mind. Right now it's printable. Yes, that's a good idea. Read only, sure, required, no. So these ones you can leave off and select by default. That's fine. So once again, I don't have my own button and I can't find this panel. So let me just make my own. I'm gonna grab a circle, the ellipse tool, and just create a, a grid. I'm just gonna make this more for me, so I'm not gonna to try to duplicate this. I'm just gonna make my own. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make that uh, more, maybe a little more gray, 50%, so it would show up. And then I'm just gonna duplicate that circle and put it inside itself. So I'm just gonna copy it. And what I like to do is paste in place, and that is Option, Command, Shift, V. So I'm just gonna do that, Option, Command, Shift, V. I'm gonna scale it down using Shift and option and there I go so now I could actually just make that white sure and then I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger and then I will do the same thing uh, command option shift V make it a little bit smaller and this time I'm gonna make this black as if I am actually going to have like like this one is selected so there's my button that's it it's done so my button is made and now that's all I have to do is um, convert it to a radio button and actually make it a radio button and then we're going to do some tricks with it a little bit later on so here is more or less what my button would look like if it was selected easy so what i'm going to do select that and now i can go over to object and interactive and convert so i could convert make it a button a checkbox obviously some of these would work i'm going to make it a radio button so if i convert it to radio button all of a sudden uh, oh, actually, let me undo that. There's a mistake I made. So what I should do, because it's made up of three different elements, I need to group it together first. So I'm going to command G or you just go to object and group. Uh, and now I'm going to go and convert it. Sorry, interactive and convert to radio button. And we saw what happened there, right? So I had three separate objects and those three separate objects were all separate uh, interactive elements, which I didn't want. So I wanted to group them all together. Then I made it an interactive radio button. And look right away, it shows it's a radio button. Yes, let me label this just the way actually um, InDesign labels theirs, they label R5. So actually, you know, R probably stands for radio. So let me just uh, radio and let me do, you know, gray or something like that, uh, just to give it a classification. And look what I have here. I have all my appearances that I want to add if I wanted to. 
that's entirely up to me, which I am going to do, but let me actually just start with those. So here's the interesting thing about this. The radio button actually does have all these different states, which is totally fine, but we just actually really just need two that we're gonna play around with, and I'll show you what I mean. So, and here's the tricky part that we have to kind of wrap our heads around. I'm on the normal on version, so this is normal on. Once I select another version, and I can select all of these just to make sure that I want InDesign to know that I want all these versions, which you don't really need all of them. Uh, you know, some weren't selected, but you know, it's just good to have them all on because all the different states to click on, off, roll over, on, off, and then the normal on. So the normal on is selected, and that's what it looks like. Great. Well, now if I select normal off, this is now its own version of that button. So anything I do to this button is only on this state. So let me do something here. What I'm gonna do is like, you know what? I don't want that black circle in the middle. I want it gone for the normal off state. Off meaning it's not selected. So that's all I have to do is click on this version of the button, double click inside of that group, and just, I'm gonna convert it to white. There we go, done. Now, if I click on this again, look what happens. The normal on still shows that there's a black circle in the middle and the normal off has nothing, but it's the same object on the page, but not as its own button, not as the button state. Same thing, if I go back to roll over on, roll over on, the black is back, that's correct, because I didn't change that version of the button. I'll go to roll over off and I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna double click inside, I'll just make it white. I don't wanna delete it, I do wanna keep the object, I just want to make it white so you can't see it or whatever color the background is or however you choose to do your form or your design in general. I'm gonna to go to the click off state again and make it white or paper I should say and that's it. So now if I click on this, it's um, one radio button that has more or less, let's say two different versions but really it's covering six different versions. Okay, and I'm just gonna click on normal on, and I'm just gonna leave it like that, done. Now I'm aware that I have this other version here, so I just wanna show you uh, the difference as I go through them. What I'm gonna do with this one now, I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm just gonna option shift, bring it down, option shift, bring it down, great. Now let's see what happens when I actually make it for an interactive form. So I'm just gonna to go to uh, export, so file and export and I'm gonna make an interactive PDF. So here I am, PDF interactive on my desktop. I'm not gonna save it for now, it's totally fine. And I'm just going to say yes, export the whole thing. So now, just like normal, now I do have one already set. So this was the InDesign version, this is my version. So maybe what I should do, I should add one that already has the black uh, circle on it, that something is already selected. But even in some forms you've seen, nothing is selected, you have to choose to select it. But look at this, just like the InDesign form, if I select one, Another one gets deselected, so only one could be selected. Now if I click on my version, so if I roll over, that's what it looks like. If I click on it, there is my uh, circle. It'll show up, and here the same, and that one gets deselected, and here the same. They're the exact same thing, all right? So you just made your own version of your radio button. My computer's just going a little slow, but it, it does work properly, and that's it. Uh, so now you have your own interactive button that you can use and uh, let's just put this to the side. Now the thing about this is, just like the other radio buttons, if you change the name of the, of the, the, the name here, the name of the radio button, say I, this is um, R gray 1 and this one is R gray 2 and this is R gray 3, this will allow you to actually choose multiple um, radio buttons in your form. So once again, I'm going to export command E and I'm just going to do the same thing and I'll replace my old one and just export it. So unlike this one, this is my one I initially made where I could only select one at a time. If you change the name of the radio button, you could select multiple at the same time. So maybe you have a form where it says uh, you need actually multiple things to be shown and be able to be selected, you could actually have it this way too. So that's how you make your own interactive radio buttons. Um, if you ever had an issue like I did when mine just wasn't showing up, the, the buttons wasn't showing up, sample buttons and forms, you could just make your own and they actually work really well and realistically if you wanted to be very customized, very creative, original artwork, you can make your own form, your own buttons for your forms, obviously your own submit buttons the same way. It's a really great way to kind of play around with that.